You know, so much of every day now is a fight. We're arguing, uh, we're criticizing, we're at each other's throats. There's so much unpleasantness. I thought it might be nice to start with some good news for a change, okay? Yeah. OJ was cremated today. <laughs> Too soon? Okay. <laughs> And we have a new trial of the century to replace his, the people of New York versus Donald Trump. So far, the people are winning. Um, <laughs> our friend Sleepy Gonzalez, does he doesn't seem to understand that a jury is going to rule on this. Uh, he, on his way out of court today, he brought a, a stack of printouts from websites that he feels make the case that there is no case. I've been here all day uh, on a trial that really is a very unfair trial. These are all stories. This is over the last few days from legal experts. This is Wall Street Journal editorial. But all of these are stories from legal experts saying how this is not a case. <laughs> I think this big stack of papers none of you can read speaks for itself, folks. <laughs> Take a look at all of these are our stories. You see them here. Uh, they call it a zombie case, meaning it is no case. The whopping outrage in Trump's indictment. It's a whopping outrage, and it is an outrage. Everybody's outraged by it. Yeah, no. <laughs> I'm not. I love it. I am not even the tiniest bit outraged, but go on. Wow. That's New York Magazine, even. All of them, they just came out. These are all, every single one. I haven't seen one that says it's a good trial. And I'm sitting here for days now, from morning till night, in that freezing room, freezing. Everybody was freezing in there. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. Motion to get the defendant some tiny mittens, Your Honor. <laughs> Trump hasn't been that cold since the last time he was in bed with Melania. I'm actually a little worried about him. This is what Trump looked like at the defense table today. I want you to note the difference between the color of his hands and the color of his face. <laughs> we do not doctor this. Those are his hands and his face. Those shades aren't even on the same Sherwin-Williams color palette. <laughs> Looks like a cantaloupe wearing batting gloves or something. <laughs> Here's how one potential juror described him shortly after she was dismissed. What was your impression of, of Donald Trump when you saw him? Um, you know, he looked less orange, uh, definitely, like more yellows, <laughs> like yellow. Um, nothing else than that. He looks, uh, he doesn't look angry or I think he looks bored. <laughs> He's yellow and bored, like a minion or something. <laughs> Somehow, even with the two seated jurors being dismissed today, one because she felt her identity had been compromised, they managed to find 12 jurors and one alternate. Each prospective juror had to answer questions about what they think about Trump, which meant he had to sit there and listen to comments like this one from a woman who said, um, she said, I wouldn't believe Trump if his tongue were notarized. <laughs> I, I, you know, that... That woman, she did not get picked as a juror, but I would like to hire her as a writer if she's interested. <laughs> the jury in this, the, the jury is picked by both sides. The prosecution and the defense get to knock people out if they don't want them on the jury. But the MAGA media, they're doing everything they can to push this idea that it won't be a fair trial. That way, when he loses, they can say, oh, it was rigged. The jury pool is, is so tainted here. They are catching undercover liberal activists lying to the judge. People will probably lie just to get on this jury. No one on earth, not anyone honest with himself anyway, believes that Donald Trump is going to get a fair trial in New York. How in the world will this man ever get a fair trial? Jury. There's say, no this is such not... thing as a fair trial when Manhattan is 90% Democrat. You have a 20-year-old white girl who works for Disney and likes to dance. Who, who this is... looks like trouble. Let's look at juror number two. Uh, gets the news from the New York Times and Google. I don't really trust anybody that gets their news from the New York Times or Google. I'm not so sure about juror number two. Juror number three. 
is a young Asian lawyer from Oregon. He's single, lives in Chelsea, and was wearing a purple jacket. Whoa. <laughs> a purple jacket. I mean, you know who wears a purple jacket? The Joker wears a purple jacket. You, can't... you know who wears a purple jacket? <laughs> this lady right here in our audience. Put him away. And while um, half of the Fox network is busy screaming about how unfairly Trump gets treated in New York, when Donye West took a little field trip to a bodega in Harlem on Tuesday, his Foxy friends bent over almost literally backwards to talk about how much New Yorkers love him. A group of women up the block called for, yelled at Donald Trump in Spanish, and they were calling him my tiger. So they were referring to Donald Trump as my tiger. And then employees of the Romantic Depot, which apparently is a lingerie store in that neighborhood, <laughs> well, waved a red banner advertising a product named after Donald Trump. Oh, I have no idea what that what is. What that product is. Well, I know what it is. <laughs> I know exactly what it is. That product, and this is not a joke. We confirmed this with the shop. That product is this, Trump dildos on sale now. <laughs> That's the product at the Romantic Depot. And what could be more romantic than a depot, you know? <laughs> Poor Rudy Giuliani's at home going, hey, dildo stores are my thing. That's where I... <laughs> Meanwhile, in Congress, the animals Trump unleashed are now threatening their own speaker, Mike Johnson. You know the guy who looks like a kid dressed as an adult for the school play? <laughs> he is being uh, threatened with removal by a group of hard-brained Republicans who are angry because he's backing a military aid package that would send money to Ukraine. Being the Speaker of the House nowadays is like being Leonardo DiCaprio's girlfriend. You hang on as long as you can. <laughs> Just try to enjoy the ride. But they've formed what they call a Floor Action Response Team, or F-A-R-T for short. So you know these are very serious people. They're... They, uh, these Americans are on Russia's side, and they're led by none other than clan mom Marjorie Taylor Greene, who's determined to pave the way for Putin, even at the expense of Mike Johnson's head. It's unprecedented. This has never happened in history, and it's completely wrong. He owes our conference the truth, and he owes Republicans answers. Does that mean you, you will go forward today? Too? Will you go forward today? I'm waiting, to, I'm waiting to find out what's going to happen. What's holding you back? Uh, I'm a responsible person. Yeah. <laughs> Marjorie, you are neither responsible nor are you a person, but... <laughs> right now, her side project is putting space lasers at the border. For real, this is what she wants to do. This party is insane. Somehow, Mike Johnson, a man who called Planned Parenthood part of an American Holocaust, isn't right-wing enough for these people. Mike Johnson, a climate change-denying, homophobic religious fanatic, knows that getting Ukraine these weapons is the right thing to do. And even though his party is terrified of jello Putin lover Trump, he's doing it anyway, and that's why they're gonna destroy him. They can't have that. If they let him do the right thing on Ukraine, he might do the right thing on other stuff. It's a very slippery slope, but... <laughs> So, but we have more important subjects to focus on, right, Guillermo? Because the new Taylor Swift album drops yeah. out. Yeah, yeah! And, um, and so, and, and we still have to work tomorrow, which tomorrow should be a holiday, right? I mean, are we really gonna make people drive after pulling all-nighters listening to Taylor Swift? Please be careful out there tomorrow. Taylor Swift's album isn't the only major release this month. It's the biggest, but we also got a new single a couple weeks ago from uh, RNC co-chair and former first daughter-in-law, Laura Trump. Today, America finally got the genre-bending musical release it was waiting for. Talking to that little girl Riding on the Pegasus Tell her everything's gonna be all right Here she is. Taylor not too swift. Um, <laughs> Well, now, I feel like that sounded terrible, but maybe I'm biased. I don't know. I recuse myself from this jury, and I turn it over to the people. We went to the farmer's market here in Los Angeles, and we told shoppers strolling by that we had a sneak preview of a new album from a big artist, <laughs> and we wanted to get their thoughts on it, and we played them a song from Laura Trump, and then told them it was the new Taylor Swift. We have a leaked track from a top artist. We won't tell you who it is. Do you want to take a listen to it now and tell yes. us your honest thoughts? Okay. 
Brutally honest. Honest reactions from me. Okay. Yes, I can be brutally honest. You sure can. Okay, sure. Let's do it. Honestly, it's I don't know who that is. It's not very good. The pitch was pretty pretty off, to be they honest. They were off, yeah, the whole time, if I'm being honest. It does sound really, really robotic, more like AI. That's terrible. It is Taylor Swift's from her new album, The Tortured Poets Department. Well, doesn't even sound like her. You seem surprised? Yeah, I've been waiting for this album. Oh my god, really? Yeah. Does she hurt her voice? Oh, no way! <laughs> Wait, I'm a Swifty. Taylor, <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't want to offend the Swifties, but uh, that single worst thing that she has ever released that I have personally listened to with my ears, yes. She sounds sick. <laughs> she sounds like she got a little phlegm or something, like, might be some drink. You know, she might be drinking too much, maybe smoking a little weed, something, I don't know. But it sounds like some mucus in there. I don't think it's up to her usual standard of quality. Who it actually is, is Laura Trump, the daughter-in-law of Donald Trump. See, that there... makes way more sense. <laughs> oh, OK. Well, no wonder it sounds bad. No wonder it sounds bad. Yeah, that would make sense. <laughs> Sorry, Taylor. Are you relieved to know it wasn't her? Yeah. Because Taylor, I love her, but that is not, that's not my girl. Do you think she has a future in music? Nah, she's not going to make it. <laughs> Sucks. <laughs> if you had to describe the song in three words, what three words would you pick? Unhinged, unnecessary, unethical. Basically, bad. Sad, annoying, basic, mediocre. Three words. Try again. Know that anything is possible. Whatever your politics, I think we can all agree. She has a terrible voice. And now one more thing before we barrel ahead. It's Thursday night, and it's time to bleep and blur the big TV moments of the week. It is time for this week in Unnecessary Censorship. Yeah. Over in Memphis, a man was arrested for allegedly trying to rob a store with a snake around his dick. You cannot prevent a defendant from the witnesses, from the judge's daughter. This is very simple. I'm operating with the smallest in U.S. history. My hoo-ha is going to be Those aren't my words because I'm pretty sure I'm not allowed to say that on TV. Tonight, new video of two men ancient rock formations here in the West. I, I've rarely seen this level of evil in my career. And I've two Nazis. 100% guarantee I'll be the best c*** he ever I can try it. My car is awesome. And I also happen to some some animals, particularly dogs, cats, uh, horses. 